Three years from now on May 12th and around 10 a.m., a fearsome duo will appear on an island that's 9 kilometers southwest from South City. Their monsters with power beyond your imagination. This was the warning given to Goku that ended up changing history forever. Gohan awakens and travels beyond anything Goku and Vegeta have ever seen. He's now become the first Super Saiyan 2. But this wasn't the original story, or more accurately, the first timeline. This is not the first Gohan. After saving Namek and restoring the lives that were lost against the Saiyans and Frieza, both Goku and Vegeta awaken into the first modern Super Saiyans, and they should be living lives worth protecting in the world's most peaceful days. Gohan is not only around 8 years old, but both his father Goku and Vegeta are probably the strongest in the universe. He never enjoyed fighting and would grow up never enjoying the thrill that Saiyans found through combat. Although Saiyans live for battle and some would even wish for immortality just to keep fighting forever, Gohan deep down would never have his life surrounded by combat constant combat. Being back on Earth was probably the first time in months that he can truly rest. Piccolo's training had completed and Frieza was obviously no longer a threat. Every childhood ideally should be filled with loving memories to remember forever, times before responsibility and ignorance that was lived in bliss. Traumatic experiences very often can crumble futures that would have manifested if not for having a troubled past. It's obviously going to be harder to keep going when you're already living a harder life. Gohan only now has been back to living an ordinary life and adjusting back to his day-to-day -day schedule with everybody now alive and protected. But then once again, everything began to change. There was the creation of two human beings named Lapis and Lazuli, who were then turned cyborg by a mad scientist from the Red Ribbon Army named Dr. Jiro. These androids far surpassed anything that the world has ever seen. When returning back from Yardrat, Goku defeated both King Cold and Frieza when they arrived on Earth. Vegeta would later return back to the planet as a Super Saiyan after three years since Goku's original return back from Yardrat. Despite the gap between these points and the likely growing power within the Z Fighters, everything still managed to fall apart. Android 17 and 18 began wiping out the planet, and Earth began undergoing another extinction. These cyborgs massacred life on Earth, and slowly began transforming the planet into what Trunks describes as hell. What makes it even worse is that both of these androids' motives are just pure entertainment. Goku never actually meets these androids, and instead, Gohan's father passes away from an unknown and incurable heart virus. This tragedy obviously marks a turning point in Gohan's life, but more importantly, Importantly, Earth and its peace has now been disrupted. Both androids appear and everybody perishes and the protectors of Earth fall. Yamcha, Tien, Chaozu, and Krillin are all defeated by the cyborgs. Nobody who can fight is still left there standing except for Gohan who just barely manages to escape. With Piccolo gone, the Dragon Balls disappear because he's still connected with Kami. Apparently the Sensu plant died so there also is no Sensu beans. Gohan then becomes the planet's defender, and the last hope if they ever want to beat 17 and 18 for about 16 years. That privilege that every child should deserve for a normal life had already been ripped away from Gohan even more than it was during the Saiyan invasion. Without the Dragon Balls and no Sensu Beans, Gohan was humanity's savior but he didn't have any help. He didn't have his dad to save him, and Goku had been saving Gohan literally for the entire series up until this point. We don't know how Gohan achieved Super Saiyan, but considering this transformation is awakened through rage, it's obviously from anger and there's everything to be angry about. Everyone and everything that he's worked hard saving is now completely gone. What others take for granted every day and something that every child should deserve was then something taken away from Gohan. He very easily could have lived life angry, and very easily could have just never forgiven anybody for his traumatic experiences. But looking beyond tragedy, Gohan is very different than what you might believe. This child, who was already put through more tragedies than generations of people would experience combined, was thriving the best he could. Keep in mind, the guy only has one arm, and then on top of it, he has his student Trunks. Trunks is Vegeta's son, and what Gohan believes can actually save the planet. 16 years have passed until now, and Gohan had likely been fighting the androids constantly since he'd been capable. Many thrash on this version of Gohan for being incredibly weak, but this is something that I'm heavily against. Gohan is weak and underperforming compared to his past and alternate counterpart, but this only further elaborates on the tragedy of one of Dragon Ball's greatest heroes. One of the greatest lessons within Dragon Ball itself is taking breaks. Time and time again, we're shown this narratively and just told outright. Goku explained when leaving the room of spirit and time that after crossing the point where stressing your body is more torture than training, you need to rest. 
This concept of training and recovery is directly and obviously taken from the real world. Once our muscles reach hypertrophy when working out with weights, it's then time for recovery. Muscle itself isn't built in the gym, and gains don't happen while you're working out. Muscles grow stronger after being torn down with the right time for recovery and rest. Most of your recovery actually happens when you're asleep and more specifically when you're in a deep sleep. Goku described it perfectly. You need to rest your body because overtraining can even stunt your growth or just torture your body even farther. Generally, when it comes to Saiyans, living in a peaceful time makes stronger warriors. Goten and Trunks in the main timeline are the perfect example. Growing up without conflict and constant combat like future Gohan allowed them the proper time for both recovery and training. Toriyama said that Ki is composed of three different components spiritual powers like energy, courage, and lastly, right-mindedness. It doesn't matter how often you train because physical strength has limits and you can only break through your current ceiling through Ki. Being within this dystopian and apocalyptic world would definitely affect one's mental state. Combined with these traumatic experiences brought along the way and everything slowly begins to make more sense. Future Gohan's untapped potential speaks volumes on just how much Gohan was fighting throughout all these years. Without having the ability to rest, it meant little time for recovery and proper training. Another pretty depressing part about this Gohan is the lack of mentorship that he would never receive from others. Gohan never trained with Goku for the android's arrival or even later enter the time chamber. Besides Besides training with Piccolo, who mostly left him alone, Gohan never once received proper training. Knowing how to train is crucial for training effectively. This Gohan never really had anybody to call his mentor or really master. Throughout Dragon Ball and even Dragon Ball Super, there's a common trope used by masters for claiming their students. Gis or other uniforms that are worn pretty often have kanji or other symbols given directly by their master. Goku is always the go-to example because he's always wearing different icons that represent different masters until the point where he becomes his own master, then removing the symbol entirely in the Buu Saga. Gohan wears his own symbol, and this kanji literally means Han. Gohan's tragedy never ended with the death of his father. It's that he wasn't prepared to be left alone by those that he loved, and especially the people who protected the planet. Future Gohan might not understand how to train and grow stronger properly because he lived without guidance and didn't have the opportunity to really catch his own breath. His gi representing himself as his own master calls back to the idea of him being forced to raise himself alone. Nobody could ever guide his hands or hand into fixing his own life besides himself. Wearing these colors and the gi itself is already wrong. Ki is all about being right-minded like Toriyama said, and Gohan is trying to become Goku. Children often and walk between the footsteps of their fathers. They attempt to learn by observing and navigating life by stepping through those same footprints. Future Gohan's real tragedy would be not having Goku's footprints to walk through to guide himself further into the future. Nobody around comes to that realization that Goku and Vegeta find about something being beyond Super Saiyan. Future Gohan most likely didn't have the fundamentals to even figure out another level beyond Super Saiyan. Everything around this world, it should be making Gohan angry, and it should be pushing him farther than any other counterpart version that we've ever seen. He feels the rage and the ferocity described by other Super Saiyans for the depressing backdrop given to this world that was once happy. Training Trunks was his answer, and Gohan believed that this kid was the future itself. Maybe he'd given up on his own life a little bit earlier than expected, but one thing is definitely certain. Gohan was always hopeful for the future ahead, and thankfully Trunks became his outlet for achieving his dreams. It's somebody who wasn't burdened with these traumatic experiences because they weren't really present to experience them. Gohan obviously does believe to some extent that he can beat the androids, but he clearly also doubts himself considering that's the exact reason why he knocks out Trunks in the first place. However, in Gohan's eyes, it's clearly different with Trunks because he makes it clear that someday he's going to be the only warrior who could beat the androids. When losing his arm and with one last sensu bean, given the choice between repairing and recovering that same arm and saving Trunks' life, Gohan's decision shouldn't really surprise you, but Gohan is betting on the future. Gohan thinks back to this decision before his final attack and final fight with the androids, and it's one of his final moments before basically resigning himself to die. He'd been training with Trunks, and even mentions how he's gotten stronger. However, this clearly didn't make much of a difference or really means much of anything in the face of terror itself. Gohan definitely entered this fight with his fair share of doubts, and definitely didn't believe 100% conclusively that he was going to be the one to beat the androids. Gohan doesn't even challenge both androids, he only challenges Android 17. Beating both of the androids himself might have always been some type of pipe dream and never something that he truly considered realistic. Gohan might believe that he has a fair chance against Android 17, but definitely not Android 18 and 17 together. He knocks out Trunks before sacrificing his own life, but basically says outright that Trunks will be the one to beat the androids and not himself. 
Gohan is making it clear before sacrificing his own life that there is going to be some date where Trunks is going to be the only warrior who can defeat the androids. Gohan clearly believes that Trunks has some type of hidden or untapped power that Gohan can't reach for himself. However, that obviously doesn't really make any sense when you begin to remember just how insane Gohan's potential has always been. Maybe it is possible that Trunks in this timeline just has greater potential than Gohan, but then why not continue training? They've already been training for an entire year, and during that time, they didn't once encounter the androids. Unless during that time the androids went on some type of vacation, then why not continue training? The answer is very simple, and it's that Gohan probably taught him everything that he can possibly learn. It's not explicitly said, but given everything that we've seen, this probably isn't too far off. Gohan became his own master as shown on his gi, but also clearly hasn't pushed himself nearly far enough to escape this apocalypse. When Goku was ready to become his own master, he didn't write his own symbol on his back. Instead, Goku just removed the symbol entirely. Gohan wearing his own symbol could imply that he's his own master, but it can also be a parallel to Goku later on by demonstrating that while he is his own master, he clearly has more to learn. With the necessity for Ki being right-mindedness and Gohan forcing himself into fighting an endless battle while his true desire is never surrounded by combat, he doesn't sound like he's anywhere near becoming right-minded. He's not trying to become the Gohan that we know and he's still attempting to navigate life by dressing and becoming like Goku. He's not qualified because Gohan never received the proper training himself, and that's the true tragedy. Gohan died preparing the future, and he served as the planet's protector for over a decade. Despite losing everyone and his own childhood, Gohan found himself fighting as a Super Saiyan and transformed by rage and understandably upset and angry at the situation. But despite everything he's been through and how angry he could be at the world, Gohan continues forward and raising the next generation into becoming exactly what he believed was impossible for himself. He wanted Trunks to grow and become the avenger for all those who had fallen including his own master.